News, news, and views. You're listening to State of the Nation on today's News Talk, TNT Radio. America is slowly starting to accept the potential and current ramifications of the U.S. government's open border policy. America is coming around that the weapons of mass migration that we've seen at play in Europe for the last decade is now here in the USA. We see crime spiking. We see criminal gangs from South and Central America flooding the border. We see human trafficking gone virtually unchecked. And 300,000 Americans dead, killed by chemical warfare wrought on us by international crime syndicates, governments, and terrorist organizations. And the American mass media cartels downplays, they spin, and they dilute this fact by using terms like cartel activity in lieu of what it actually is, state-sponsored terror colluding with corrupt intel agencies and the Biden DHS to weaken America intentionally and leave us vulnerable to all manners of attack from what members of over 170 different countries potentially we're calling it out for what it is here at state of the nation as is our next guest who's going to give us his take on the worsening situation as well as tell us about a new documentary coming out very soon that we want that we're very excited to see and i know you will be too we're joined by the spokesman for veterans for america first that's v-f-a-v-a-f uh he's a navy veteran out of south carolina Chad Caton, welcome to State of the Nation. Hey, man, it's great to have you. So give us your take on where we're at right now with this border situation. I will, but I got to say first, um, I'm a Navy CB. Okay, so oh, it's, okay, it's, CBs. I was a All dirt right. sailor, so not against my brothers and sisters on the ships, but I was a dirt sailor, and and we like the pew pews a lot more than the boys on the boats. But at the end we of need the our day, CBs, um, man, CBs are CBs are important. Yeah, we. Uh, I'm proud of it. I got to make sure I throw that nomenclature in there. But uh, yeah, we have a new border film coming out from Veterans for Trump, Veterans for America First. Uh, it's directed by Stan and Donna Fitzgerald, along with uh, uh, Jared Craig. I'm an assistant director. Um, I just got to film uh, General Flynn yesterday on it. Um, uh, it is a raw, raw, get used to uncomfortable look at what is actually happening at the border. We want to be able to sit down. We want to be able to show you the the uncomfortability of what's really happening at that border and really put it in perspective for America. And border invasion and American crisis is something that we're going to be able to hopefully get around to the whole country through the uh, Salem Network. And we're going to be able to really open some eyes. Maybe we got to go around with some toothpicks and make people keep their eyes open so that they can face what's real instead of just making this a partisan situation. Yeah. Hey, Chad, it is great to see you. And um, I look forward to seeing that entire thing myself. And you're right. We have been talking about this border for a long, long time. It's heating up. And now it's finally starting to get a little bit of media attention outside of Bill Malusian and Fox, who's been doing a bang up job reporting on the border. But it seemed for a long time there that only Fox and maybe Newsmax and maybe OAN were covering this. You turn to CBS, NBC, ABC, uh, all the others, MSNBC and CNN. You got nothing on this. Then all of a sudden, the I Iowa caucuses happened, and we saw that everybody in Iowa said their number one priority in Iowa was our wide open southern border. We saw the same thing happen on the other side of the country in New Hampshire during their primaries when the number one exit poll question was, what was your number one priority? The border. So now people are being forced to look at it. You're going to force them to look at it in a much more real perspective than the way the media including probably Fox, if we're honest, is willing yeah. to show. Uh, because we've talked to Rodney Scott. We've had on uh, Art Del Cueto on the program. We've talked to some of these border guys. And the story they tell, it is it is horrific what's happening on that southern border. And it, for the Biden campaign and the Democrats as a whole and the mass media to try and pretend that this is somehow in any way compassionate is just utter BS, isn't it, Chad? 
<laughs> There's no better. I got a couple other words. We'll, we'll leave it alone, though, at BS. But yes, yeah, sir. I mean, it, 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 the concept of sovereignty, the idea of we've got Bill Gates telling us we got too many people on the planet. Then at the same time, he's all about letting 10 more p million people come up in the United States. So much for his backyard, right? But I guess you, I guarantee you he's got a uh, wall around it, just like we should have around our country. That's where we sit in the idea of ridiculousness that comes from the left and making this a part of uh, a partisan situation when those very liberal left and the ones that want to be humane or in, in, in the, I don't understand where it's not humane. How about you stay over there and you wait to get your paperwork in? It's very simple. I took two congressional candidates and went hunting for the cartel on American land in the Badlands with a guy that had the show on Newsmax. I mean, uh, excuse me, uh, Netflix. And he hunted the cartel, the show cartel land. We caught two, two drug mules that tried to start a fire in the middle of nowhere. And, and so that they, we, uh, any interest would go there. And we ended up catching these guys with backpacks of fentanyl, fentanyl enough to kill an entire city. Uh, and it's going to be in this film. And I'm just a fireman from Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, that said, you know what? And helping a congressional candidate, how are you? Can you talk about it if you haven't walked in it? And we went there. We found the most dangerous place we could go. And it's in the stories that you'll hear are, are unbelievable. And, and, and the thing is, we have to hear those stories. People are so insulated, even though the borders are open, we're so insulated to the craziness that is happening to the border. And you want to talk about inhumane, being an open border is inhumane, period. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm just blown away that we today can look in the rearview mirror and see 300,000 dead Americans, many of them not drug users, many of them completely non-combatants, many of them children, many of them police officers who had an unlucky moment with, with this chemical. And we're looking at what? This is okay? This is okay. We're, we got 300,000 dead Americans and we're going to have 400,000 if things don't get worse by the end of this year. And ABC, CBS, NBC, MS and CIA none of these people want to talk about it at all it's just like we we start we enacted the PNAC plan and totally disrupted the Middle East after what happened on 9-11 for 2,997 dead Americans no outcry hardly at all for the 300,000 and climbing that we're seeing right now I mean why I don't understand I mean we're, we're we've opened the border up to at a time when and, you know, uh, geopolitically, things are tenser than they've been since pre-World War II. I mean, is this an intentional disruption of our country? That's pretty much the conclusion that most people are coming to at this point who are seriously looking at it. This is absolutely intentional. There is no way around it, and I'll fight anybody otherwise, because it's very simple. You want to put up a, a thing on MSNBC every day why Donald Trump was the president that talked about how many people died of COVID, by the way, came from China, and then you want to sit there and you don't want to talk about fentanyl, you don't want to talk about this most dangerous drug that we used on ambulances and had to call two doctors because somebody broke a hip or just had their leg cut off. I mean, to the, to the, um, and, and the whole rig of that uh, ambulance had to be careful because of what what we're dealing with and i don't know about you but it, i've never seen a, a fentanyl a fentanyl farm in mexico it's because it's not coming from mexico and our in our our country sovereignty our our biggest national uh interest as far as security apparently is climate change instead of this big ugly monster that is china bringing fentanyl and everything else into this country and then bringing the human trafficking element to it you know a lot of people want to talk about the human trafficking which is disgusting but we're talking numbers right and the idea of 300,000 uh, Americans dying in one way or another and coming in contact with a, an illicit drug that is brought here, not, not grown, not mailed, brought to Mexico by the Chinese. And then you talk about the actual men that are coming across. I don't see any women and ch children. We're talking about armies walking across that, that border. But the, the left is like, no, we're really not. Everything's good. This, the border's secure. I'm tired of it, frankly. And I love the truckers, the farmers, and everybody else that's going down there and letting freedom ring. Because it's about time that the government pays attention. And that's what Veterans for Trump does. That's what VFAF does, is we've already been in the suck. We're okay with being uncomfortable. And we're going to go out there and lead from the front and take this country back under the guise of our political lexicon.
Well, there you go, Chad. Well said. I, I, you can just, I can just tell listening to you that you're pissed off. And it's a righteous anger, too. I, I, I don't blame you at all. And, you know, kind of picking up on what Hesh was just talking about there. Yeah, there's 300,000 dead Americans. And if we want to circle back and talk about, yeah, well, you know, the Americans, these, these people shouldn't have been doing these drugs. Well, a lot of these Americans are people that are buying counterfeit drugs that they don't know are counterfeit. Uh, and they're taking them for just common ailments and they're dropping dead. But let's go back even beyond Mexico and let's go a little bit further south. Let's talk about the Darien Gap. All these people that need to get across the southern border, if they're traveling from Central or South America, have to go through the Darien Gap. God knows how many bodies are there, but that is just that is run by... <laughs> I would say criminal crime syndicates, but I think Hesher was a little closer to the truth. They're terrorist groups, and these people are making billions and billions of dollars, not to mention China making billions, all for the sake of the destruction of the U.S., from what I can tell, and I don't see any evidence to suggest otherwise. That's the main goal. And Biden, meanwhile, and the Democrats are turning a blind eye to it, and that's probably part of the reason we're not hearing about the fentanyl, because as you said, it's China, and China's, God, they just flew a balloon over the damn country. What the hell is going on with Biden and China, and the Democrats and China, and frankly, some rhinos and China? China's really got a hold on us, don't they? Yes, they do. And and frankly, uh, you said rhinos, as in some, we have an each enormous rhino problem. An enormous rhino problem. South Carolina. We're a big red state, right? Go look at CPAC as far as our legislation. We are last as a conservative supermajority as far as legislative, uh, conservative legislation. 41% is le conservative legislation. The Dixie Democrats were coming back and they're, they're coming hard. We're giving them a fight. Now, back to the fentanyl situation. This is something that, that, that nobody saw coming, but we all saw coming, right? The whole uh, war on drugs, and it's always going to, it's just like computers. My phone has to have an update every six months because they upgrade it. They're going to upgrade their drugs because everybody gets, uh, they build an immunity to it. So they need a better drug that they can get their money from. They want us walking around. The Chinese want us walking around, hopped up on this stuff, killing us off one by one. The left refuses to recognize it, but at the same time want to give sp safe spaces for people to, to inject this junk into their body and stand there like zombies in San Francisco. Go. It's a it's the, the hypocrisy of the left is one of the most ridiculous things I've ever seen. And I would never want to call half of my country uh, completely stupid. But you can't put your finger on how this makes sense in any wide world of sports anywhere as to where this a, a Democrat city is going to say, hey, y'all stay down there in the meatball district or whatever they call it. And y'all can take some uh, uh, do as much drug as you want. Poop on the street. We don't care. And, and, and then talk about how we have a drug problem. But the border is not the problem. Does anybody, am I the only one that's sitting in a world of ridiculousness here going, what, how did I get raised different than anybody else? That's the problem with this partisanship and stupid that's on the left. And then the right has no backbone on, on Capitol Hill. I need to see me some people up there with some backbone ready to, to, to bonk some heads and get them things done. And I'm not saying violence, but I'm just saying stand up for something, man. The people out here are dying. And you, 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 MSNBC had that little clicker up there of everybody dying from COVID and put it on Trump. The minute Biden was there, they took it off the screen. And now where's the clicker for, for, for fentanyl? It's right up there with COVID and it's continuing to climb. And I actually will tell you, I believe that there's way more people that have died than 300,000 with fentanyl because it's a pandemic where and it has no it has no bounds it can be with rich people it can be poor people but the rich people end up poor people this is all you can't tell me this is not part of some really evil people's plan there's just no way yeah you know uh you bring up a great point about the covidian era there and the messed up thing uh, <laughs> Plenty of us saw it in real time, but that was a case demic. That was a case demic. They weren't even talked. The, their numbers for deaths were bogus, and we knew it right away because someone fall off their bicycle in front of a car, and all of a sudden they give the dead body a PCR test, and it's like, yep, died of COVID. And then a bunch of doctors and hospitals and government subsidies start moving around every time one of those things ticked. So it's like they gave us a case demic to have an absolute fear campaign versus is an actual pandemic and now that we have a pandemic of death of chemical of americans dying of chemical warfare 
nothing, just crickets. I mean, it's completely, completely amazing. We're down to about a minute left. Um, Hang on, people Brian. are waking. Yeah, yeah, I'm go sorry. ahead. We got about a minute. I want to I wanna add that real quick because somebody else is getting paid but pharma. And if you when you watch this film, you're going to see Tim Foley from Cartel Land. I asked him, I said, why? Why is this not closed? And he goes, <laughs> you don't think that they're not paying everybody on Capitol Hill? This drug money is going to Washington, D.C. And that's how these people are coming off of that hill wealthier than they when they got there, period. Wow. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Go ahead, Steve. No, I was just say that's 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 a staggering claim that uh, that senators and congressmen and women are uh, profiting from the cartels. That's uh, that's crazy. Well, you know, what? there's no doubt uh, in my guys, mind. They put it into other packs. And the next thing you know, you don't know where the money came from. That's yeah. right. A lot of black bag money going around here. And, uh, you know, just to run the clock out a little bit on this, because I'm on fire right now with you here, Chad. Again, we want you to check out Border Invasion and American Crisis. You can see the trailer on YouTube. Um, but I just saw a headline yesterday talking about a, um, a cartel member who was in court. And he basically said, you can't convict me of anything because I've been working with the FBI. So, hmm, there's something to think about, too. When we talk about money making and all this, what's going on with our government, what's going on with these cartels are they in cahoots well sure freaking looks like it all right again border invasion and american crisis chad caton thanks so much for joining us we'll have you on again real soon best of luck with everything and we'll see you again soon here on state of the nation at today's news talk tnt stay tuned